Amazing, amazing team of leaders. Wow, they're such an honor to be here. I love both of them and esteem them very, very highly. Would not be where I am at all without Bishop and his influence in my life. Thank the Lord for everyone here. Thank the Lord that Sister Vesta is going to be okay. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Psalm chapter 126 and Luke chapter 6. Psalm chapter 126, verse 5 and 6 on this World Nation Sunday and giving and Luke chapter 6, verse 38. So thankful for my beautiful wife, Janae, and our kids and all the sacrifice they're doing. God has given us great revival in this first year in Frisco. We launched October 16th. 46 people have received the gift of the Holy Ghost in the first year. Amen. I'm thankful for that. Psalm 126, verse 5. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. He that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. Luke chapter 6 and verse 38 says, Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, shall men Give into your bosom for the same measure that ye meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. My assignment this morning is to preach to you the essential key of sacrificial giving. The essential key of sacrificial giving. Would you open up your heart right now and let the Lord begin to talk to you? Would you let the Lord begin to guide your thoughts? Lord Jesus, we love you. Thank you for this opportunity to be a part of such an incredible moment. A great breakthrough is about to take place. We give you the glory and the honor. Let us be connected to your voice, your mind, your plans in Jesus' name. If you love him, would you clap your hands to him one more time? Amen. High five your neighbor, tell him let's roll, and you may be seated. It's amazing how apostolic revival takes place with a few essential ingredients. Unity, I believe, is absolutely essential for anything to take place like this. This didn't just happen overnight. There is a unified body that believed God and went after things together like pastor said so many times this morning. There's something about being together in one mind and in one accord that draws the presence of the Lord into an atmosphere. Aren't you thankful that you go to a church there where there is absolute unity in the presence of the Lord? Obviously, apostolic revival takes doctrine. I still am so thankful to know that there's only one God. And here, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. I believe it with everything in me, and I know you do too. I just want the devils to make sure they hear it this morning. There is only one God. His name is Jesus, and the demons tremble every time you bring that up. <laughs> you don't have apostolic revival like this without prayer. This obviously was built by prayer. This is the house of prayer. This is the greatest house of prayer across the world, in my opinion. You are sitting in the greatest house of prayer ever built by man. Aren't you thankful that you go to a praying church? We're not here just to watch the preacher, but we pray Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Fasting is absolutely essential for apostolic revival. Demonstration has to be there for it to be apostolic. If people cannot get healed at the church, I don't want to go to that church. I want to go to a place where God is still the healer, no matter shata, no matter what the sickness, no matter what the disease, and you're in that room as well. Miracles upon miracles have happened in here. You. I bet a lot of you could raise your hand right now and say he's healed me in this shot, in this very room. That's how much I know he's a healer. And now for it to all get quiet, giving. It's 
the first time I've ever heard that on that part. <laughs> Giving is essential for apostolic revival. One preacher said one time, the toughest three subjects you'll ever preach are giving hell and about the pastor. But I promise you, he said, if you want it to get quiet, preach on giving. But it doesn't matter how quiet it gets. It is absolutely the key for some things to break open in any atmosphere. You know good and well that there's some things giving does that even praying doesn't break through. Even fasting doesn't break through. But when you shut up, when you give, something begins to open up in the spirit and God cannot refrain the answers that are coming to you. Would you clap your hands that you know a God that knows what you give? Yes, he does. Luke chapter six and verse 38 said, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure. In the Greek, that is better measure. Meaning no matter what you give to God, it will come back to you in a better way than you gave it to him. You may have given something that you think is massive, but when God returns the miracle, it will be greater in your mind than what you released to God when you gave to him. Good measure, pressed down, which in the Greek means packed in. My wife said, take the trash out. It's overflowing. I just went to the trash can and, come on dude, where are you? <laughs> Packed it in and said it can, it can handle some more. Pressure from above upon the container I wasn't trying to hurt the container. I was creating space in the container. He said, when you give to me, I'll open, up, I'll open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. You don't have room enough to receive. You think you can handle everything, but the pressure that you're under is not an attack from hell. I am creating space in your life for the greater blessings of my power to flow into you. Somebody ought to thank God for the pressure right now. God's making some room. God's making, shut up. God's making some space for what he wants to do in your life. <laughs> Press down, shaken together. In the Greek means to be stirred up, like you would stir a pot of soup and the, the ingredients beneath the surface would rise to the surface. In other words, when God starts blessing you, he has things beneath the surface that you have no idea are even there, but they only manifest when you start giving. And when you give, things start to come up in your life that you had no idea, God. And running over, which simply means to overflow. The only way something can overflow is if it's been filled and the source keeps pouring. Put a cup under the faucet, a few seconds it will be full. But if the faucet stays on, the cup will run over. That's what happens when you get the Holy Ghost, by the way. He pours it in you, and then out of your belly flow rivers of living water. Same idea with giving. When you give to God, he pours it back in, and then it starts to overflow. There's about to be some releasing of blessings upon this church corporately and individually because of the giving. Psalm 126, verse 5, they that sow in tears shall reap in 
joy. Reap in joy in Hebrew means to have a ringing cry. In other words, the harvest will be loud. When you give, when you're hurting, one promise you can expect is a loud harvest. What's about to happen will not be quiet or just on a street corner where the person never comes in the door, but there will be a loud harvest in Alexandria such as never has been seen before. If you believe it, would you act like you believe would you shut up? Would you act like you believe it right now? Something's coming to your city. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. But it gets much better in my opinion. He that goeth forth and weepeth. These next three words scare me. I didn't realize what it meant. Bearing. Precious seed. In the Hebrew, it's Nasa, Meshech, Zerah. Nasa, bearing, to lift up or to carry. Meshech, a trail. Zerah, your offspring. He that goeth forth weeping bearing precious seed or lifting up a trail of offspring. Sometimes you need to name your miracle by naming your offering. He said the people that are sowing, if they will go as they're hurting and lift up their kids, they will without a doubt return rejoicing, bringing their sheaves or the harvest of their offspring with them. Are you ready, somebody, right now? Someone in this room is going to give this morning, and you're going to name that offering after your lost child, and God is going to go get your baby and return that baby to the house of God. God. Now, I know that's sweet, but if you've got a loved one, you ought to get with that right about now. Is there anybody with a lost loved one that you've been praying for, but you're about to give for and see what God can do in their life? Shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. This is not a post-funeral miracle where, you're, where you're, your grandchild prays through. This is not a post-funeral breakthrough where your kid comes back to God. This is a miracle that will happen while you are alive. You will see. In fact, you're going to bring them. I know some of you are giving me that stare, but I promise you in the Holy Ghost, it's already been happening in our church. People have been giving and their lost loved ones, they're naming the offering and their lost loved ones are coming to the house of God. Who's ready for a breakthrough in your family? Who's ready for a breakthrough in your family? He said, Oh, without a doubt, you're bringing the miracle with you. Somebody shout, name the offering. Abraham called his Jehovah Jireh, my provider. Moses called him Jehovah Nisi at the altar. My, read the one who reigns in victory. Gideon said, I'm going to name this altar Jehovah Shalom, the Prince of Peace, the God who reigns in peace. Can I tell you, if they did it in the Bible, we ought to start doing it right now. And when we bring an offering to God, it's not because I'm obeying. It's because I'm saying something's coming to my family and I'm naming the offering. Where do I give? What do I do? Ecclesiastes 11 verse 1 in the King, King James Version says, 
cast thy bread upon the waters, for thou shalt find it after many days. You know what it says in the, the NLT? I read this the other day. Send your grain across the seas, and in time, prophets will flow back to you. Some things happen. Some things only happen when you give to missions. Some things only happen in this house when you give across the sea. And you say, God, I'll never see this again. But something will come back to you. I'm in the house of missions giving. I feel that. Something. Who can testify already right now that you've given to missions before and God gave it back to you? Good measure. Look around. Press down. Shaking together. Running over. A couple of years ago during COVID, I went to preach for a friend of mine in Houston. And it was a Sunday morning. His name's Joel McCoy. And I was preaching on Sunday morning and, and the Lord spoke to me and said, preach on giving right during COVID. It was a very tough time. And I fought and wrestled with that all morning long, but this began to stir. So I went to the pulpit and began to preach. It's not an easy subject to preach. And so as I'm there preaching about releasing and giving, I didn't even know this at the time, but he told me this on the, on the phone yesterday. It's a lot of the details. He said, Josh, he said, I had $120,000 in a stock that I had built up. And he said, I, I begin to say, God, how much of this do you want me to give to the church? We need to remodel the school and we need to remodel some parts of the building. And I just want to know how much you want me to give. And, and he said, God said, give it all, but don't give it to your school. Give it to missions. He said, but we, we, we need to remodel this school. We, we, got, we got things we need. I got to give all of this. And I got to give it. He said, pastor's names, people's names across the seas began to come to his mind. And, and so he stepped out in faith, told his wife, and they wrote the check for the $120,000 for missions. In that Sunday morning service, $446,000 came in. We took the pulpit, he said, we're giving every dime of this to missions. We're gonna send it across the sea. Some personal missionaries I know, and then some obviously to headquarters. But we're giving all of it away. I didn't know this part until yesterday. I was thinking about that story and I called him and I said, Joel, man, tell me about that miracle. He said, you don't understand, Josh. He said, first of all, I'm only in church because of the Mangans. He said, my grandpa prayed through in a church that Vesta Mangan's father built in Huntington, Texas. He said, and I was a young man, half backslidden, and my dad sent me to POA to be a part of their internship. And he said, every week, Bishop Mangan, Pastor Mangan, would walk in the room and would tell us, you got to give to missions. You got to give to missions. You got to give to missions. He said, his voice was ringing over and over in my ears. And so for years, I've decided when I get a church, he was an evangelist for a while, I will give to missions with everything I have. He said, this was the open doorway. I said, Joel. What happened after that? He said, Josh, we had 350 people that weekend. He said, last Sunday, we had 660 people with 100, 100 regulars already out. We've already doubled in two years. He said, the 120,000 I gave to God came back within less than two months. He said, say we had several families. They, gave, they sold their cars. They gave their mortgage. They had saved their life savings, and they gave it all. And he said, every single family that gave it all. It was returned to them and more within just a few weeks because missions cannot come back void. Yeah. 
He said Houston was shutting down. We had a contractor, an engineer in our church. He had a, he had a company, 12 different people. Every contract for the other companies was shutting down. He gave $40,000 in that service. He called and said, Pastor, the city has given me every contract possible. He had to hire 28 more employees to have 40 during COVID because of the contracts that kept coming in because he gave to missions. It's God's guarantee. It will come back to you in a way you cannot expect or deny. I'm not just preaching. I've brought two checks, one from our church and one from my family. I'm not here just to preach you a message and get you to give. I believe it with everything inside of me. I believe that we're supposed to step out in faith today and see something happen that this church, and I know this church has seen everything, but I'm telling you, I believe something is supposed to happen this morning that you've never seen before in the history of POA. It's only going to happen when someone says, I'm all in in missions. Watch what God will do in this church. Some things only happen when you pour the water out. You don't expect it to return, Elijah. In the drought, you pour the water out. We, we spoke that at the Ohio camp meeting a couple months ago, and a breakthrough happened, and $260,000 was given on a camp meeting service, and the revival began to break out that Sunday across the district. Hundreds received the Holy Ghost. You know why? Because something happens when you say, we're all in. We're going to release every. I know it's tough. I know it's quiet. It's hard to hear it, but I'm telling you in the Holy Ghost, some things only happen when you get the essential key of sacrificial giving. I remember a kid, I'll, I'll close with this, I remember a kid, Stockton, California, a revival we had. I remember a kid that was uh, in a service Wednesday night, giving service. He walked up, he, he was probably early 20s, he put, he put a check on the altar, he, he walked away, and then a few, uh, a few hours went by. The next day I was at the church praying, I walked in to pray, and there's this kid, and Bishop, he's walking back and forth, dancing, and he's praising God, and I said, hey, man. He said, hey, Brother Harry, my name's Morgan. I said, hey, Morgan, nice to meet you. He said, yeah, he said, uh, I gave everything to God last night. I get, I've saved my whole life. As a teenager, as a young adult, I've saved everything. I gave everything to God, every penny. I said, that's amazing. He said, I walked into work today and I got fired. I was like, well, I wasn't expecting that. And I really wasn't expecting you to be dancing. He's like, no. The Bible says give. It'll come back in a better measure. So he said, if, if I gave, if God has something for me, he had to disconnect me to connect me. He said, I'm thanking God. And I was like, oh, yeah, okay. He's like, let's rejoice, Brother Harry. I'm like, oh, let's rejoice, yeah. He were, he's, he's dancing all around about 30 minutes. His phone rings, his boss calls. He was a... Morgan was a salesman for some kind of vacation company at a sports store. Boss calls, Morgan, we made a mistake. We fired you. We thought someone had accused you of being too aggressive and, and, and overzealous, and we, we thought it was you, and, and you told us it wasn't you, but, but we found out we had the wrong guy. You have your job back. Morgan said, no, thank you. Right in front of me. I said, Morgan, he just offered you, you needed to he said, no, that's, not, that's what I had. That's not God, that's what I had. I was like, ooh. He goes, either we have faith in finances or we, don't, we should not brag about having faith at all. Because you can't serve God in money, Jesus said. And so I said, okay. And, I, and he said, no, no, thank you. Boss called back a few minutes later, said, Morgan, listen, we're really sorry. We'll give you double the pay, we'll give you a manager position. And Morgan said, don't managers have to work on Sundays and Wednesdays? He said, yes, that's our company policy. He said, no thanks. I'm listening. I'm like. He said this to his boss. This isn't God. 
Why would God bless me then never let me in his house again? I said, oh boy. I said, Morgan, perhaps you should talk to your pastor, get some counseling. I got this, Brother Herring. I was like, oh, okay. Boss calls back a third time. Morgan, I talked to the CEO of the company. He said, why is the kid not taking the money in the position? He said, he wants Sundays and Wednesdays off. The CEO said, I bet he's a Christian. The boss said, he is. CEO said, lucky for him, so am I. Give him the job, give him the days off. Tell him I said it's done. Wait. Morgan said, that's God. About a year or so goes by, he calls me, Brother Herring, I did it again. He said, I went to because of the times. I was up in the balcony. He said, my wife wasn't with me. He's married now. He said, and I felt God say, give it all. I was like, did you call your wife? He's like, nope. I was like, you're dead. You're definitely a rookie. <laughs> He's like, I wrote a check for everything. I looked in our account. I wrote a check for everything we had. I said, oh, God. What'd you do next? He said, I text my wife. Don't use the debit card. <laughs> like, you're definitely dead. <laughs> he said, I felt the power of God in that room. So I gave everything I had that we had. He said, two weeks later when I got home, I got hired at another company giving me triple what the double amount was and Sundays and Wednesdays off. Then he became a professor at the Bible college, making even more. He said, Brother Herring, since that day, because of the times, I've been blessed ever since because God will not ignore me when I keep giving to him. Can I tell you, God wants you to go all in. Let's stand. I feel the Holy Ghost right now. Let's stand. I'll give the first few thousand. Who's going to follow tonight, today? I'm going to pray a prayer of faith and a prayer of release. There's ways you can give on the screen. I believe they're going to put it up there. If you're watching online or if you've got a phone in here, you can give online. It's already starting. But something is about to break forth. That Bishop G.A. Mangan saw over and over and over. Some things only happen when a church goes all in for missions. Would you, as you begin to let the Lord talk to you, I'm going to pray. Would you listen for the voice of God to tell you what to do right now? By the authority of the word of God, by the power of the name of Jesus, by the anointing of the Holy Ghost that's in this room, I release a spirit of sacrificial giving in every chair, in the balcony, in the bowl, everywhere across this room. Sacrificial giving in Jesus' name. The difference between giving and sacrificial giving. One hurts. When you sacrifice something, it means something dies. Then maybe the plans to buy the new truck, whatever it is. But when you go all in with God, he's going to do more for you than that truck could ever do. Some things only happen when you sacrifice Abraham and you say, I'm all in. God says, I'm all in too. You've never seen what I can do when I go all in. You've yet to see my greatest works. Are you ready for God to move right now? Would you come bring your offering to, to the basket if you've got the envelope? And if you're giving online, would you step out in faith right now? 
And would you begin to do what the Lord is saying to do? They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. He that goeth forth and weepeth bearing precious seed shall doubtless come again rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. There is a spirit of sacrifice in the room. The quiet walk is on right now. But name the offering. Name the offering. Name the offering. Name it. Name it. Name it. This is for my grandchild. This is for my uncle. This is for my daughter. This is for my husband. This is for my wife. This is for my boss. This is for my best friend. For my teacher. For my coworker. For my neighbor. For my parents. Let it break open right now. You can text to give. You can go online at poa.church. Text POA giving to 73256. You can mail it in. But you need to be a part of this right now. Revival Tabernacle, our church is going to be a part of this. My family is going to be a part of this. We're going to be a part of what God's about to do across the world. I want to be a part of it. I don't want to just preach it. I want to be in it. I want to see God do it. We're getting ready to pray in a moment with each other. Prodigals are going to come home. Several before the year is even up will be back home. A preacher said that he was debating on giving to his school or giving to missions. He saw he saw two things. He saw a church having church with no roof. He saw people worshiping in a building with no roof. And he saw some African-American young children in the street. And he said, he searched and prayed and called and sure enough, there was a church somewhere in Europe having church with no roof. And he sent them money to pay for the roof. And then he found the village where the kids were, where the parents had been killed in the war. And for two years, several kids have been living on their own, several starving to death. So they built medical, or they built medical facilities, orphanages, and a church for those kids. And then everything they released to God, he said, came back so quickly. They can't even fit the people in their church now. It's crazy how crowded it is. It's amazing. Because some things only happen when you give to missions. I'm going to ask Bishop and Pastor to come to this platform right now. This, this church is known, I believe, being raised in the UPCI, is known for prayer and giving. More, it, just, it just stands out when you think of those two things. You think of POA. I'm going to ask Bishop and then Pastor to pray over this offering, over this audience. I don't know the needs that are in here. I'm sure they have an idea a lot more than I do. But I'm gonna ask them to pray one at a time over every situation in this church. 
and there will be divine answers and miracles from God that will take place across this church. Thank you, God, for the word that we've heard today, the revelation that you bless me with today, that I can name my offering. And today I named it. And God, it's going to happen. And we're going to see a great miracle. We're going to see a miracle in our family. We're going to see a miracle in this church. We're going to see revival like we've never seen. Now, God, I know everyone standing here felt what I felt while this was being preached. And they have named their miracle. Now, God, you have never failed. You're too good to do wrong and too wise to make a mistake. You have never failed. And we put our faith and confidence in you. And I pray not next month, not next year, but I pray this week that they begin to see a reward and you begin to see that press down feeling and they begin to feel a filling up God that you're going to do. And there's going to be raises that's going to take place. You're going to bless their businesses. I speak it now in the name of Jesus through the authority and the power of the name of Jesus. I speak it over every individual, and I speak it over every family. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Pastor. We've started this service off talking about being in one mind and one accord. We have given here today, Lord, in one mind and one accord. Bishop has just prayed for every need, every name that was calling, every situation that was calling, and I know that you are going to meet those needs. But when people joined together in one mind and one accord, there was a moving of the Holy Ghost. There was a moving of the Spirit that swept through that upper room. Windows bursted open, doors bursted open, cloven tongues like as a fire, a mighty rushing wind. And I'm believing that through this offering, there is a mighty rushing wind. We have given in unison, in one mind and one accord. And I'm believing that there is a mighty rushing wind and a falling of the Spirit that is about to hit central Louisiana like we have never seen. So I am joining with this church body, our family here, God, in believing that you are about to pour out your Spirit on all flesh here in central Louisiana. Let us be ready here at the POA with open arms and open doors to receive the outpouring of the Holy Ghost that is about to come on central Louisiana. I speak and I claim revival in sin and not just for our church, God. Let it happen to every church, every apostolic church, God, every Baptist, Catholic, Presbyterian, Episcopalian, whatever it may be, God. Let the power of the Holy Ghost, let cloven tongues like as a fire begin to sweep over central Louisiana. Let the revelation of the mighty God in Christ and be let it sweep through this place, God. We're in one mind and one accord. Now let your spirit fall in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Let it happen today, God. Before we leave, Brother Heron feels impressed for us to pray together. So join your neighbor next to you in one mind and one accord and in unison. And let's go to the Lord in prayer together over every name that you called, over every situation that you called, and believing that God is going to pour out His Spirit upon you and your family, our community, our state, our nation, and our world. Let it fall across the world right now in Jesus' name. Bless these men and women that have given here today, God. Bless and honor their sacrifice. Answer their prayer. Let it flow unto them as they have given, Lord. Give and it shall be given. Good measure, pressed down, shaken.
shaking together and running over. Let it flow here today. Let it happen here today, God. Heal our bodies. Answer our prayer. Bring our loved ones home. Whatever was named today, God, begin to move in that situation. Give us revival. Pour out your spirit. before we leave do want everybody to know if you've never repented of your sins if you've never been baptized in the name of Jesus if you've never received the gift of the Holy Ghost there's no greater day than today because the Spirit of the Lord is here and we would ask you to come let us know because we'd love to pray with you but before we leave one more time one more request in one mind in one accord and in unison can we lift a shout unto the Lord that begins to break those things open in Jesus' name. Hallelujah! Break loose. Let it shake loose. begin to walk around. Why don't you begin to walk around in the aisles? Begin to claim those things. Begin to give God honor and glory and praise today. If you need to leave, you can leave when you want to leave. But the Spirit of God is here. Why don't we walk around today and give God glory and praise? Why don't we begin to, or why don't we keep claiming those things? Pour it out on us, God. We give you glory today, God. When a sacrifice goes forth like this, who knows what God will do? Don't run out on Him now. Now's the best opportunity to get what you need. To those of you that have watched on the web today, it's been an honor to have you. Those of you that have given sacrificially, we do not take you for granted. Thank you for your giving. I believe the Lord is blessing you in Jesus' name. Let him touch you in Jesus' name. You want to repent of your sins, be baptized in his name, fill with his spirit, get in touch with us or another apostolic church. We'd love to pray with you, teach you a Bible study. It's been an honor to have you online. We'll see you Wednesday night at 7. God bless those of you.